In just 74 days, Americans will head to the polls and have a choice to make, either elect Joe Biden or re-elect President Donald Trump. Here in Canada, there are actually more than 600,000 American citizens who are eligible to vote this November, but in 2016, it's estimated only 5.3% of voters living here actually voted. Democrats have been busy making their case, of course, for Joe Biden all week. Will that motivate voters abroad to vote Democrat? Bruce Heyman served as U.S. Ambassador to Canada under President Barack Obama. Obama. He and his wife, Vicky, are also co-chairs of the American Voter Abroad Initiative for the Biden campaign. Ambassador Heyman is joining us from Aspen, Colorado. Hi, Ambassador. Good to see you as always. Good to see you and hello, Canada. <laughs> uh, let me start off and, and ask you just about that question we framed in the introduction around, uh, in particular, voters here in Canada who are el eligible to vote. We had the coach of the Raptors on a few weeks ago who was really yeah. urging people to take this opportunity and, and, and do the opposite of what happened in 2016. What's your message to Americans living here in Canada tonight? Message is pretty simple, that what happens on the other side of the border doesn't stay on the other side of the border. And Donald Trump has been the greatest damage to the Canada-U.S. relationship that any individual has ever perpetrated on this relationship. And we need to make this change. But more importantly, what happens with Donald Trump in his second term is a direct threat to the American democracy. This experiment that we had since the late 1700s, which has had its twists and turns, this is the greatest threat, I think, to the functioning, the rule of law, the isolation, the authoritarianism, this threat is the greatest threat since the Civil War. And Americans in Canada can actually maybe be a part of the outcome in electing Joe Biden president. Go to votefromabroad.org, go in, get your ballot, ask for it by email. You'll get it in 30 days from today, 30 days, the first voters that vote in the U.S. election are actually Americans abroad. And so you'll get your ballot. You need to turn it around right away and get it back to the states because Donald Trump's trying to mess with the Postal Service. So we've got, I think, plenty of time to get it back. But, uh, but look, this is critical. And uh, wouldn't it be something if we found out later that Americans living in Canada actually made the decision who the next president was? Let me ask you to make the pitch then. How does a relationship between Canada and the U.S. change under a potential Joe Biden presidency? So think about it this way. And Joe Biden, I know quite well. He swore me in. I traveled with him to Vancouver for the Women's World Cup. And then he was hosted for a state dinner after the Trump uh, election in Ottawa in December of 2016. Joe Biden has met with uh, Stephen Harper. He has met with Justin Trudeau. Joe Biden is someone who values relationships, both internally in the United States, but also internationally. And then you have the vice president. The vice president um, designate is Kamala Harris. And Kamala Harris spent from age 12 through high school in Montreal. You can't have a better combination of people who understand the importance of Canada-U.S. relationship than Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, especially given a president that we currently have who has threatened your steel and aluminum with tariffs multiple times now on the basis of national security, threatened your auto industry, threatened troops at your border, withheld N95 masks till he realized that the components that make them come across the border. Order, use threatening language to the prime minister and then foreign minister. Nobody's done more damage. And then his language, even this last week, talking about, you know, friends and foes and sometimes friends are worse than foes. This is ridiculous. But I think the democracy in and of itself in the United States is being threatened, given what he's doing with the Justice Department, what he's done with troops sending him to Portland, what he's done with good people on both sides of racist and anti-Semitic outbreaks in Charlottesville. Look, we, we've got a problem in America, and we're at a very significant crisis moment. And this isn't about Republican versus Democrat. And I, you know I've supported Barack Obama, but on the other hand, I voted Republican and Democrat my whole life. And I've always said, you've got to pick the best person. In this case, the best person is Joe Biden. But more importantly, we need to get this ship not only upright, 
but it's going in the wrong direction and we've got to turn it around. Otherwise, I think four more years, the damage that's being done may be irreparable. I want to dig a little deeper into some of yeah. what uh, Joe Biden has proposed so far. I know there's more policy to come, but I have taken a, a bit of a look at the economic policy put forward by the Biden campaign. And there is somewhat of a, a protectionist vein to it. And, and the reason it jumps out at me is because of what you outlined, some of what you outlined from President Trump, right? Even the tariffs we're facing right now for, for aluminum, for example, and, and the uh, experiences this country has had with his version of American protectionism. So it jumped out at me because... Uh, uh, he, the, 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 um, Mr. Biden is proposing a $700 billion Buy American program. I'm wondering right. whether you think Canadians should be worried about that. You know, I think in the long run, what I think Canadians should be worried about is a president named Donald Trump who is dismantling environmental policies where we have 25 percent of the fresh water in the Great Lakes that we share together for fresh drinking water. And this guy has threatened the safety and quality of the Great Lakes, the drilling in the Arctic, which he is now proposing, the dismantling of NATO and the reduction of force that's already taking place. I'm telling you that I think that whatever a next president Biden brings is going to be significantly better. But I think that Biden, as a president, will have to look at the economic circumstances of the moment. We have tens of millions of people that are just on subsistence, that are unemployed and don't have jobs to go back to. We have supply chains in, in medical and in drugs and in vaccines that show vulnerability to the United States. But if I were ever asked, I would say, look at Canada as our partner and ally. Look at it as we, look at it as together, and then make those decisions economically and politically as a partnership as opposed to you and me, which is what is existing in the White House today. So is that to say that we should be interpreting by American policies as something different than they appear on paper? So we don't even know what that is exactly going to look like and what buy America means. But what it means is but we, know what we it has need meant. to build. <laughs> we know what it has meant. But look, and in all reality, what we don't know is where we're going to be economically on January 20th and what the what the picture looks like. And I would be an advocate for continuing to promote positive outcomes in working with Canada and looking at you as our ally. I don't look at you as a security threat for the kinds of things that uh, President Trump has. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ambassador. Pleasure to have you on our program as always. Good to be here. Take care. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.